mami mami no me bang mata tu pum pum mami mami no me bang mata tu pum pum mami mami no me bang mata yo soy brang bon digo que malo y no me ganan bravo y malo te digo y no me por eso escuchan esa cosa que le van pronosticar digo in Havana all roads lead to the Malacan and that's where we begin this week's special new music edition on Cuban music well, most Cubans who remember what life was like before the revolution don't really want to return to the old days of illiteracy and poverty. Since Toronto sax and flute player Jane Bennett recorded her 1988 jazz debut album called In Due Time, she's been busy. She's recorded two more albums, she's headlined in jazz festivals around the world, consistently topped the critics' polls, and she's become Canada's woman in Havana. Jane is here right now along with her husband, trumpet player Larry Kramer, to record her fourth album. It's a Canada co-production deal featuring both Canadian and Cuban players. Today is day one, rehearsal day. And even though no tape is yet rolled, when you consider the bureaucratic finesse it's taken to get the project this far, you could say it's already a success. How long has this taken us to actually, I mean, how long have we well, been working on Well, this project this has seriously been in the works for about three years. We've been working on it. For the initial idea where Larry and I were like having a drink probably here and say, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to be able to record a record here? And then we thought, well, why can't we? <laughs> You. Yeah, that's it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I got it. Again? Yeah. Almost exactly two years ago, uh, I was given a letter when I first started doing some work for the CBC. I was given a letter there and they said we were sent this from Jane Bennett. Um, sounds interesting. We don't know what we can do with it. Why don't you have a look? And so uh, the letter outlined a plan of hers and Larry's. They've been coming down here for a few years now, making a lot of musical friends, hanging out, uh, soaking up the, uh, the music here. And they uh, had this idea that they wanted to record a record down here, or an album, with Cuban musicians and basically use the basis of Cuban music. proud of their culture and they know their artists. Like all the people we're working with, you could take a walk on the square, center square, and you could say, oh, do you know Gonzalo? Of course, everybody knows Gonzalo. Do you know Mercedes Valdez? Mm -hmm. Do you know, I mean, they all, they know all their, yeah, they know their own artists. I mean, it's like, you know, music is rhythm. The clave is in everybody. I'm constantly knocked out by how deep their musical roots are and how much is based on it, the clave, you know. You know, and Guillermo will come up to us and, you know, he says, Danny Greenspoon, clave! You know, and all of a sudden you have to listen to whatever you're listening to and then go... <laughs> and he says, yes, very good, Danny Greenspoon. You know, I mean, you know, he's a teacher. He's always teaching. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. It's a totally different uh, school of music, and so I'm being initiated into this uh, style of playing. I played some uh, Afro-Cuban rhythms before I came here with uh, people in Toronto, but uh, nothing is, uh, I don't know how to put it, authentic as this, and certainly n not being able to be in touch with people who are so a part of the music and, and get the moral and musical support from them to be able to grow in this way, you know? Is there something you great. could show us on bass? You knew oh, I was going to well, ask. Did oh. you have a bass right there? Oh, wow, yes. Well, the only problem is I, I, I think this wire's hanging me up, but I do have something I can show you, which is my little gift that I got. Really? Yes. Oh, what's that? Which is, um, I've been accepted into the Committee de Defensa de la Clave. He's the president, world president, the Committee in Defense of the Clave. <laughs> now, who's attacking the Clave? That's what <laughs> I want to... <laughs> he says many of the bands that play, you know, they forget about that. He says that. even in Cuba, yeah. Yeah, so he's, his they job is to... They get sloppy with it. They forget the Clave, and the Clave is the heartbeat of the Cuban music. So, he's, his job is to go around <laughs> <laughs> checking no! it. No! You see them in action. And no! Clave. No! They'll run right up on the bandstand and say no. <laughs> really took coming here to get to the core of, of, of the Afro-Cuban music that attracts us because we've never really been sort of Latin jazz fans, even though we, we appreciate it, but yeah. Latin jazz is sort of taking the rhythm. It's uh, something that comes out of New York and L.A. more so, where you take the elements of, of Cuban rhythm and then you, put, you mix it with great jazz soloists on top. Well, Disney right. started that, that whole movement, but we've sort of gone back to the more folkloric elements, as well as having a lot of younger players like, you know, Gonzalo, and so we're really co combining some elements, and, and it's not a Latin jazz record. We have a lot of, you know, of the Afro-Cuban, African melodies that we're using, and, you know, very heavy on the drums. In terms of early R&B and rock and roll, most of those come from Cuban rhythms. For instance, it's really Bo amazing. Diddley. The most Bo obvious Diddley one is Bo Diddley, Diddley right? Right. Bop, bop, bop. That's a clave, right? The accent is different. Exactly. Yeah, it's on the, what is it? It's uh, the it's, one and the yeah, three instead of the exactly, two and the four. Right. Exactly. And, I, and if you st keep that in mind, and you start to think of some of the music, for instance, even something like the Who, My Generation, that the whole basic rhythm of that was just taken talking about my generation. I mean, the whole rhythm was yeah. built on that kind of thing. People will try to put us down We were talking Rolling Stones, even Just before the breaking Chuck up of Berry. rhythm, you know, combining. Hey, Richard, yeah, it's, really... it's the wrists, isn't it? It's exactly. The space it's the space. Between. Good point. And the thing that I find interesting too is because Cuba is an island, and they have been so cut off because of the embargo, the music has not changed. It, yeah. it, the music hasn't changed here, and it's almost like there's, I don't want to say a time war, but it, that's not what it is. The, the purity is, of the they music. They kept the, their identity and the purity of what the music is. Even was. though it has advanced, there's a lot of great Cuban yeah. pop groups like Los Fan Fan. <laughs> to Cuba and you can play your instrument and you have a sense, you know, people invite you to play mm -hmm. and, and that, that's how our whole project began.
to have uh, the piano player you have as well. Yeah, well, we've got three piano players, and we're lucky with all of them. The first one was a guy named uh, Ilario, who's one of the guys on, on the scene here, a brilliant player. The next guy we've got is a guy named Fran Emilio, who, an older guy, must be mid-70s, late-70s now, great player, and invented a rhythm that, in fact, in places like New York and stuff like that, people write whole pieces based on his rhythm. This guy is the guy that invented it. And of course, the third player we have is a young guy here named Gonzalo Rubalcaba, who is n rapidly becoming world famous uh, on the international stage. Uh, he's very much in demand. He's an absolutely brilliant young player. we're trying to do here is the idea of get a bunch of musicians on the floor, have them play live with each other. It's not the pop approach to a record where people, you know, do overdubs, you do the rhythm tracks, then you add the solos, then you add the, uh, uh, you know, colors. This is capturing colors. the moment. This is more like a jazz record, yeah. where on a jazz record everybody plays at the same time, what you hear is what you got. And uh, that's been a learning experience for everyone, you know? I mean, all of us have been learning stuff. Jane and Larry learned musical stuff from Guillermo. Guillermo learned stuff from us, you know? The, uh, I've learned stuff from the drummers, you know? Placing microphones, I've been doing this for a long time. You put a microphone somewhere, you know, and then the, this old guy who's 75 years old, he go, I'll go, Educacion. <laughs> To me, the Cuban people are the most remarkable people under the circumstances right now with the rationing and the cutbacks that they have. They've still maintained a incredible pride and identity that I haven't seen in really any other country so far. Yeah. 